Hey guys, and welcome to another smart contract tutorial. In this video, we're going to be building a simple Ether Wallet smart contract in order to review some fundamental concepts about sending and receiving funds to and from a smart contract. I've been receiving a lot of questions in this area, so I just wanted to make one short video to make sure that these concepts are clear for everybody before we move on to more advanced tutorials. So if that sounds good, stick around and let's get started. All right, so this smart contract is going to be a basic wallet for storing and receiving Ether on the blockchain. There are only two requirements. One, the contract can receive Ether sent in by anybody. And two, only the owner of the contract can withdraw funds. So let's go on over to our Remix code editor and see how we can code this up. All right, so once I'm in my Remix editor, I'm gonna go ahead and expand the contracts folder. And I'm gonna choose the first contract, which is just provided here by default. And I'm gonna change the name. We're gonna call it one underscore ether wallet. Okay. And now I'm just gonna delete all of the code in the file and start fresh. Okay, so as usual, the first thing I'm gonna do is set our license identifier. So that's gonna be spdx dash license dash identifier. And as usual, I'm gonna give this a MIT license for open source. Next thing, I'm gonna set my Solidity version. So I'm gonna say Pragma Solidity. And the current version at the time of recording is 0.8.11. All right, so far so good. We'll go ahead and save that. And we'll just go over to our compiler and make sure that the version of the compiler matches the version we've set in our code. So we can go ahead and, and select 0.8.11 from the dropdown there. Resave and we should see our error message go away. Great. Okay, on the next line, let's go ahead and define our contract. So I'll use the contract keyword and then now I'll give it a name. I'll say ether wallet to match the file name and go ahead and give it some curly braces. All right, so the next thing we need is a state variable for the owner because we said that we wanted only the owner to be able to withdraw funds from the wallet. So we'll need a way for our code to know who the owner is. So I'm gonna say address payable public owner. Now let's break this down a bit. So address is a variable type and uh, the address type basically refers to an Ethereum address, okay? Now payable, basically functions and addresses declared as payable can receive ether. So it's very important that this owner be payable since he's gonna be withdrawing funds and receiving that ether into his account. All right, next public. Public basically means that this variable is visible to other functions inside the smart contract and also outside. And also it's interesting to note that the Solidity compiler will automatically generate getter functions for public state variables, which we'll be able to see once we compile and deploy our contract in our Remix editor. All right, next let's go ahead and define a constructor function. So basically a constructor function is called one time during the life cycle of a smart contract and that is at the time when the contract is deployed to the blockchain. Okay, so the constructor is called one time and it's a good opportunity to run any sort of initialization code. And in this example, we'll be using this opportunity to set the owner address, okay? So let's do that right now. We'll say owner equals payable message dot sender. All right, now let's break this down. Message is a global variable that is available within a Solidity program. And message dot sender will basically give us an Ethereum address of the, the address or the entity, the person who is deploying this contract at the given time. Okay, so this will be the, the owner's address. Now by default, message.sender is not payable, so that's why we have to convert it or cast it to a payable type in order to set the owner variable since we've said that the owner variable is of type payable. All right, so far so good. Next, we need to set up a function that will allow our smart contract to receive ether or receive funds coming into it. So I'm gonna say receive 
external payable and we'll have an empty function body with just two curly braces. Now the receive function I believe came into place uh, during Solidity version 0.6.0 and it's a type of default function that allows the smart contract to receive funds. So as long as there's no call data or uh, any kind of parameters sent in with the function that is sending ether to the contract, then receive will be invoked and will allow the contract to receive funds. And so another good point here is that um, sometimes it can be confusing to talk about sending funds to a smart contract because usually we're used to sending funds from one wallet to another wallet. Well, a smart contract can actually act like a wallet in a certain way in that it can it's able to receive and hold funds just like any normal wallet would. So that's why we can create a smart contract that can act uh, as a savings account or as a type of wallet, which we're doing in this case. Okay, so that's all this function is doing. It's allowing our smart contract to receive funds, to receive ether. All right, so next let's implement a withdrawal function so that the owner can withdraw funds whenever he wants to. So this time I'll use the function keyword. Uh, another interesting point to note about the receive function is that it doesn't require the function keyword. So it's sort of special in that way. All right, moving along, we'll say withdraw. We'll say uint underscore amount. And the underscore is just sort of a convention. You don't have to use it, but um, it's often used in Solidity programming to denote a uh, function parameter as opposed to a state variable or a variable inside of a function. So it's just sort of a convention, which you you can use or not. All right, so we'll say external, and we'll give it some curly braces. Okay, now we'll write a statement that will actually transfer the funds from the smart contract to the owner. All right, so we'll say payable message dot sender dot transfer and then underscore amount. All right, let's break this down. So message.sender, uh, we just talked about that one. So this indicates the address that is currently calling this function, okay? So in this case, it doesn't necessarily relate to the owner. We have to put a check in to make sure that this is the owner. Um, in the constructor, we definitely know it's the owner because this is the person who's actually deploying the contract, okay? But if then another third-party wallet invokes a function in the contract, now message sender will refer to that address. So it's not, when you see message sender in another function aside from the constructor, it's not necessarily the owner. So if, if we want to make sure that this is the owner, we're going to have to put in another check, which we'll do in just a second. All right, so dot transfer is a function to transfer funds, pretty self-explanatory. And here we're just transferring the amount that we passed into the function, okay? Now you might think, uh, don't we have to put in some sort of check in place to make sure that somebody isn't withdrawing more funds than are, than are available in the smart contract? Well, no, we don't have to explicitly check for this because the Ethereum virtual machine will make this check for us. And we might see this if we run a test later and attempt to withdraw a greater amount than what is in the smart contract, we'll see that that transaction is automatically reverted. Okay, and then we have to, finally we have to cast message sender again to payable to make sure that this address is able to receive funds. All right, so the final step is gonna be to put a check in place to make sure that message.sender is the owner. So for that, we can use a require statement. And so we'll say message.sender equals owner. And now we can pass in an error message in case this check fails. So let's say only the owner can call this method. All right, great. Now we're almost done here. We just need one more function and that is just to query the balance of the smart contract at any given time. So again, I'll say function, let's say get balance, external. Oh, by the way, I didn't explain what external means, but basically external functions are part of the contract interface and that means that they can be called from 
other outside contracts and also via transactions, for example, by other third-party applications. Okay, view returns uint. All right, so we'll just stop here to explain that view means that this function is read only. Essentially, it means that it can, is allowed to read information from the blockchain, but not in any way change it or modify it. Okay. Okay, so returns denotes the return type of the application. In this case, we're returning a uint, unsigned integer. And we'll code that up right now. So return address this dot balance. All right, so address this refers to the address of the current smart contract. In other words, the address of the Ether wallet smart contract. All right, and dot balance, the property dot balance simply gives us the balance or the amount of ether that this contract holds. All right, so pretty straightforward there. And that's all we have to do uh, to code this up. So let's go ahead and save it. And next we'll compile and deploy our contract. All right, so it looks like we got a warning here. Let's see what's going on. Um, expected semicolon. So we're missing a semicolon somewhere. Here it is. All right, let's go ahead and save that, and good, green light. So we're good to go. I'm gonna hit on the compile button. All right, now um, go ahead and select the uh, tab with the sort of Ethereum looking icon here. And we wanna make sure that we've got the JavaScript VM environment selected. And this just means that we'll be deploying to our virtual in-memory blockchain rather than a real one. Okay, and make sure under contract, you've got Ether Wallet selected. And we can go ahead and click on deploy. One thing, take note that we've got 100 Ether in all of our sort of starting um, addresses that Remix provides us with for testing purposes. Okay, let's go ahead and deploy. And that deployment was successful, so I'm just going to pop open my console a little bit. And if we scroll down, we can see our deployed contract, Ether Wallet at, and it gives us an address. And we can see all of the functions that we can invoke on our contract. So I just want to point out one thing real quick. Now, if we look back at our account and we had selected the first account, that means this is our owner account. Now we have slightly less than 100 Ether. So what happened here? Why did our balance go down? Well, anything you do on the Ethereum blockchain costs gas, which means there's, there's a cost to executing any kind of code on the blockchain. And in this case, since we're you know, just using a test environment, it just cost us a very small fraction of an ether to deploy our contract. So that's what's reflected here, and that's why we're seeing a slightly less than 100 ether balance now that we've deployed our contract. All right, so first, in order to test our contract, we actually have to send it some ether, right? Right now the balance should be zero, so we can actually check that with our get balance function. So go ahead and click on get balance. And we can see that our contract has a zero balance as of now. Okay, so we, we have a receive function and we said that this is the function that allows our contract to receive ether. And the way we can invoke that, because we don't see any receive function here, since it's a special kind of function, we have to use our low level interactions. And we can use this right here to create a transaction to send ether into our function. All right, and so, we said earlier that receive is invoked when ether is sent in to a contract and there's no call data. So this will be this will be left blank and that way our receive function will be invoked. So first, however, we've got to send in some ether and this defaults to way. Um, I like to set it to ether just to make it a little bit easier. So let's send in 25 ether. So we'll set the value to 25. We're still on our owner account. Actually, let's, um, let's choose another account because we said that anyone can actually deposit funds into the wallet. So I'm gonna choose like the fourth or fifth one down here. Um, keep that at 25. And again, scroll down to our call data and just hit transact. Okay, so now when we check balance, we should see that 25 ether reflected. And there we go. And, and the reason you see all these zeros here is because the default is way which is a subdenomination of ether. Okay, so this basically, this means that we've got 25 ether or 25 with a bunch of zeros in way. Okay. So 
it's uh, important to note that the withdrawal amount is also going to be in way. And so what I like to do is use a little ether Ethereum unit converter. So let's attempt to withdraw 15 of the 25 ether. So I'm actually gonna use this number, the 15 with a bunch of zeros in my withdraw function. Okay. So first let's, try, let's uh, stay on the same account. Remember we've got the fifth account selected, which is not the owner. So let's just test the theory that only the owner should be able to withdraw from the contract. So I'm gonna paste in my amount there and let's try to withdraw. Okay, perfect. So we're seeing an error message and we're seeing our custom error message that we set up, which says only the owner can call this method. All right, so let's switch to the owner. So we'll go back to the very first account. Okay, so first let's try to withdraw a greater amount than exists in the contract. So I'm gonna say 35 ether. And let's go ahead and try to withdraw that amount. Okay, perfect. So we're getting another error message and this is saying the called function should be payable if you send value and the value you send, here's the key part, should be less than your current balance. So if you notice, we didn't, send, we didn't set up any specific check for this, but the Ethereum virtual machine is checking for, the, for us and reverting the transaction since we're requesting more money than the contract currently holds. All right, so let's go ahead and change this back to 15. So this time we are the owner we're asking for less money than is actually in the contract, so we expect it to succeed this time. So let's go ahead and try that. Withdraw. And perfect, it looks like that withdrawal was successful, and we can verify that by checking the balance on our owner account, which we were seeing a balance of 99 ether. So now we should have like 99 plus 15, so just under 115 ether is what we're expecting to see in our balance. And perfect, we've got 114.9999, reflecting a successful withdrawal from the smart contract. Now, let's check the balance, but before we do, what would we expect to see here? So we started with 25, we withdrew 15, so we should be seeing 10 ether remaining, right? Let's check that. And perfect, just as we suspected. The one last thing we can check here is the owner. And, we, and this will give us an address, an Ethereum address, and we can just make sure that that matches up with our current address. So I'm just gonna note that this ends in DDC4, and perfect, DDC4. So it looks like everything on our contract is working as expected. Um, it's a simple wallet, not much to it, but I think it was just important to go through this simple exercise to sort of solidify some of the core concepts around sending money, receiving money, and um, how that works with contracts. All right, guys, so that's all I have for today. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, hopefully it wasn't too boring if you're already a Solidity expert, but again, I, I thought it was just important to review some of these core concepts before we move on to more complex contracts in uh, future videos. So with that said, if you guys are enjoying the content on this channel, I encourage you to subscribe and join the community. And other than that, hope to see you in the next video, and you guys take care. Talk to you later. Bye.